Oh, great. Yet another front living fifth wheel, like we don't already have enough out there. That was my exact thoughts when I heard about this Avalanche 360 FL. However, it is a brand new floor plan for 2023, and there is good reason for Keystone Avalanche to make this model here because it is right at 40 feet. So a lot of people looking for a floor plan like this that has your separation from your living room down into your kitchen, this is gonna get you in that at a more manageable length that's gonna be about two to four feet shorter than a lot of other front living options out there in the market. So this is a brand new floor plan for 2023. I am back here in Dallas. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Miles. I'm at a Holiday World in Dallas, Texas, and I am in a sales position. So I do not get paid to come out here by any manufacturers or by my dealership to make these videos. I do this on my own time. Hopefully someone like you might see this video and be interested in this RV and I would love to help you out in purchasing this RV or any of these other RVs that I have out here as well. It's lots of different options and we're gonna get into this video here and talk about why Avalanche made this front living floor plan and a bunch of stuff that I like about it, maybe things I don't like about it if there's anything and then we're gonna see if it's something that you like. So let me know down below in the comments what your thoughts are. Let's go. What's up y'all, welcome back to another video. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, I'm super excited that you're here. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy. And if you do get something out of this video, consider hitting the like button down below and definitely hit that subscribe button as I upload new videos almost every single day of the week throughout the entire year and show a lot of never before seen RVs. So hit that subscribe button. And then if you didn't know, I am in a sales position. So I do not get paid by my company or by any manufacturers to make these videos. I do these on my own time in hopes of finding somebody like you that might be interested in purchasing this RV. And I would love to be a part of making that experience a memorable one for you. So you can go down to the first link down below in the description if you are interested in purchasing this RV and you can leave me your contact information through that link there so that I can get in touch with you and helping you purchase this RV. That's all I got for y'all. Let's get into the video. I'm really excited to announce that we now have 100% Spanish speaking RV tours online. Thanks to my father-in-law who now works with me, we've been making videos that are 100% in Spanish on his YouTube page. There's links down below in the description of this video to find those, or you can just search RVs con Luis and you will be able to find those pages there. He is also in a sales position, so if you or a family member speaks Spanish and would rather work with him, he is also here to help as well in regards to purchasing your RV. And if you or a family member would like to see tours of these RVs in Spanish, you now have access to those. So search RVs con Luis, go watch his videos there and subscribe to his channel. All right, y'all, so this is the brand new 2023 Keystone Avalanche 360 FL. Now, before we get into the inside of this RV, first of all, gonna put the floor plan layout and the specs here on the screen so you can see those there. And then we're going to, you know what, let's go real quick and just look at the exact specs on this exact model here as well, because those specs on the screen are just the generic specs for Avalanche, but this here is the exact specs where this vehicle weight is at unloaded at 14,000 pounds even you have a 2,440 pound cargo carrying capacity, which is gonna get you a gross vehicle weight rating of 16,500 here on this model. And then again, this is gonna be right at 40 feet. So we'll go around to the other side here and take a look at what the exact length is. And then I wanna talk about what the Avalanche brand is exactly and what kind of their objective is and where they fit in the market versus other brands. So this one here, dang, it's actually at 41 feet, one inches. So still kind of long, but it's giving you, it's really interesting to me. As I look at this model, I'm like, okay, it's really not that much shorter than say an Alpine or a Montana front living. So I'm trying to figure out exactly who and why people would be interested in this model over something else. So actually, I'm really gonna need y'all to tell me what your thoughts are of this model. I'm gonna explain what's different about this front living versus other front livings. And then I'm gonna need your thoughts on what you think, because this is one that I'm really like, there's just so many different front living options. Like how does one make a decision between liking this one better and this one better between different stuff. So first of all, getting to the Keystone Avalanche brand. So the Avalanche is the little brother to the Alpine. So Avalanche and Alpine both look pretty much the same on the inside as far as color schemes and tones and stuff like that. But Alpine has a few more features that Avalanche does not come with. Um, so that gets it into a little bit higher price point. So 
Alpine also does not make the exact same floor plans as Avalanche as well. So they have some differences there. Now, both of these are going to be full profile fifth wheels. So what that means is you're going to have a flat roof line coming into the front cap. So unfortunately, I don't have like a mid profile fifth wheel here to look at right now. Um, our Cougar line, they still have some mid profile fifth wheels, but in a mid profile fifth wheel, when you have this front uh, ceiling line coming up here to the front cap, it typically swoops down into this area. So you don't get as much headroom in this interior portion of the RV. So this is gonna be a full profile fifth wheel in that sense. It also has a flat roof all the way to the back. So no slant down in the roof going towards the back. And then you have a dropped frame up here as well. So you have this 10 inch drop frame right there. That is going to give you a wider stance on your legs here for your leveling system. And then this does have a hydraulic auto leveling system. Something that is different than like say the Montana High Country that is also a full profile fifth wheel, but Montana High Country, which is very comparable to Avalanche, is going to have an electric auto leveling system. But these are all full profile fifth wheels. Then you see something like the Sprinter over here where the Sprinter does not have the drop frame construction and the stance of the legs are much more narrow. So you can see there wider stance on the Avalanche with the drop frame and then Sprinter flat underneath with the um, more narrow electric stabilizer legs. So that puts Avalanche kind of in this in-between point where it's not quite as expensive as something like a Montana or an Alpine or a Solitude. This is more like the you know, step down from those higher end ones, but still giving you something very quality in those. So this is gonna be comparable with something like a Montana High Country or like a Solitude S-Class, something like that. So that's everything on the outside here. We're actually gonna try something new for the duration of you know, probably at least the next few months. I'm gonna start with just going on the inside first. I think this is something that a lot of y'all will appreciate going inside first. Um, I think it's something, honestly, maybe I've been a little bit selfish in where I just you know, want you to watch a little bit longer portion of the video to get to the inside. But you know what? I think ultimately you would enjoy seeing the inside first. So y'all let me know your comments on that. That way, people that don't want to see the outside, we can get right into the inside. And I do apologize for already going through the whole, you know, explanation of what the Avalanche brand is if you're not interested in that type of stuff. But anyways, let's get inside. So as you come in, you have this big solid step. Now, something to keep in mind, this is a super wide solid step as well. There's a lot of brands that I've seen from different manufacturers where the steps are literally like maybe this narrow on each side. So very, very wide entry step coming in, feels very safe going in and out. And then Avalanche comes standard with this bigger grab handle that is going to come down to where you can easily reach it without having to take a step up onto the step there. So solid step coming in. You do have the screen assist bar. So this allows you to pull this at any point where that bar is at to disconnect your screen door coming in. And as we go inside, another thing that really separates Avalanche from some other brands is Avalanche is a 100 inch wide body construction fifth wheel. So that is going to kind of set it in a different class than some other fifth wheels where the standard width on a fifth wheel is 96 inches wide. And this also has very tall slide out boxes in this living area here. So slide out boxes are gonna be nearly seven feet tall right here. So a nice walk-in slide. It's gonna be lots of other brands out there. Um, even like Montana, um, like the Montana High Country version that this would be comparable to is gonna have a slide out box that only comes to about right here. And then there's various other brands out there that will have shorter slide out boxes. But you can tell the height of a slide out box if you just stand in it, I'm about 6'2". And this here, I mean, there's so much headroom you can easily walk in it and that's not the case with different fifth wheels. So 100 inches wide, you have this taller slide out box. It's gonna give it a nice big feel in here. And then very modern. Again, this is a 2023 model. However, they didn't really change anything on the interior look and design of this model for 2023. And when you come up into the front living area here, your height in here is probably about 6'5 to 6'6 or so. And then you have your AC up here in the roof. Your ACs do have the residential air filter. I still have yet to see this from any other manufacturer aside from Keystone. So Keystone, a lot of their products coming with that Merv 9 grade residential air filter in your AC system. That is going to keep not only your air cleaner flowing throughout the RV, but also your ducting cleaner throughout the lifespan of your RV as well. While we're up here talking about that, you do have three ACs on this unit as well. That's something to keep in mind as well when you're looking at pricing across the country. 
A lot of other models, I run into this a lot where I'm pricing out a unit for somebody as I am in a sales position and they're showing me prices of different RVs at different places across the country, comparing them and whatnot and asking the differences. And a lot of times it's just the equipment that's equipped on the RV as well. So this one has the third AC on it. We're in Texas. That's pretty important in an RV this size, but there's going to be a lot of dealerships across the country that will probably only order this with two ACs, especially trying to keep it in a lower price point than something like say an Alpine or a Montana. So those are things to keep in mind. Now in this front living area, nice big space here, the hundred inch wide body construction definitely gives you a nice comfortable feel in here. And then when you come up, you can see you have your fireplace directly across from your recliner seating and you do have a retractable TV. So controls for the TV should be right here. Let's see, we do have 200 amp hour lithium batteries on this Avalanche for 2023. So it comes standard with the 200 amp hour lithium batteries. That means right now we have power to do all these different actions here. I wanna show real quick before I put this all the way up, you have your windshield here. So really nice view looking out into whatever your surrounding environment may be. And it does have a pull down blackout shade here as well that has wood pieces that it'll fall into for your privacy there. So, but when you are not wanting that windshield view there, put your TV up, or I guess more I should say when you're wanting to watch TV or watch a movie or something like that, you'll have your TV up here. It's gonna be a 50 inch screen TV. So you put that up and you will have your TV here directly across from your recliner seating, sound system up above it. So you have your speakers here and then all of your audio controls. This is all Jensen sound systems and a Jensen TV. Fireplace here, this is gonna have multiple different color options. So you're gonna have like a purple, orange, blue, and kind of like an orange, red, natural fire look. This is gonna put out heat. So this here will definitely help heat up this space here in this living area. If you're just hanging out here, maybe it's, you know, 40, 50 degrees outside, something like that. Will definitely help keep it warm in this area. Your backsplash back behind here, I don't know what material this is, but it almost looks like kind of like an alligator skin type of print. So pretty interesting choice there for the backsplash back behind there, but it definitely feels nice. And then open this up, nice big deep storage shelves down underneath here and then everything in here is gonna be soft closed cabinets. Something definitely impressive from Avalanche where most stuff in this price range is probably not going to have soft closed cabinets. Although I have not stepped in every single 2023 model coming out so I can't say for sure. But I know that was the case in 2022 where Avalanche was probably one of the only things in this price range that had the soft closed cabinets as usually it was just in Montana and Alpine that you'd have to go up to something like that. Now around here, both your sofas are going to make into beds and looking at the sofa color here, this is their Easton colorway, I believe. So the gray sofas in here, they also do have another color option where you can get more of a dark brown sofa. So they have both those options, but both of these are going to make into beds because this is a hundred inch wide body construction. When you make these into beds, you're still going to have a walkway in between the beds. They're not going to touch, but those will make into just about a queen to full size, full size to a queen bed, sorry, somewhere in between that range when you pull these out into bed. So plenty of sleeping space. Want to point out too with your windows, this is something where you're going to have your pull down blackout shade on all of your windows as well. And a nice little touch that you have is around here, you have balances that go down the, the whole window. So when you pull down the blackout shade, no light is seeping through the sides. It truly blacks out all the light. Now this is something, and again, and a lot of different brands, even at higher price points, I have seen lots of different brands that do not do the balances down the window. So when you pull down that blackout shade, it is not actually blacking out the light because the light can still come in through the sides. So a little touch there that you're seeing with that balance that goes down the window, those will retract up on their own like so as well. And then you have your two recliners here. These are gonna have heat and massage on them. So you will have your heat and massage functions plus your USB port. Flip this up, you have storage in the armrest. That's even this, wow, that's kind of nice. It's actually a soft close function there. And then this here, more storage in the middle there. And that one, definitely not soft close, but you have the storage on both sides. And then these are going to just have, I believe, a, yep, a pull strap here for the recline function. There you go. So let's make sure they recline all the way back. They do, can definitely lay down in these the way that they're set up here. And then this is part of the Thomas Paine collection from Lipper for your furniture. 
So that is pretty much everything here in the living room area coming down into the kitchen. No privacy curtain in this one. That is something that can be installed. So if you do want a privacy curtain, don't get caught up on that. That is something that can be done. So keep that in mind if that is something that you need. And when you come into the kitchen here, nice big residential refrigerator. You have solid surface countertops. You're gonna have all your controls right here when you walk in. So it's gonna be push button controls with a glass panel there that protects those. And then coming around. Now, this is where this floor plan gets a little bit interesting because I was telling y'all when we were outside, like I wanna know your thoughts on what you think about this model. And where this one gets a little bit different is you have a pantry in here and a lot of front living fifth wheels are either going to have a half bath or a pantry in this space, but most often I feel like we see a half bath here. Now the reason they do that is because on most front living fifth wheels, you have your bathroom on the back wall. So you have to walk through the bedroom to get to the bathroom. Now what they did on this Avalanche model is they actually put the bathroom in between your living space and your kitchen. So that way, if you have guests that come in here, you have a sliding pocket door right there that is going to give your privacy into the bathroom from the bedroom. And this here, this is going to allow guests and whatnot that you may have over or company to not have to walk all the way back through your bedroom to get to the main bathroom. And it makes it so that you don't have to have a half bathroom to accomplish that as well. So one bathroom, but access points from both sides of the bedroom, both on this side and on the other side. So that is something that is a little unique in this model versus a lot of other front living models out there. So curious on your thoughts about that. As we go around the kitchen space, new light fixtures for 2023, these nice, you know, kind of geometrical design here that they did, definitely a fan of that. I like the look of that a lot. And as we're looking up in this direction, I want to point out to you, you still have the blade AC vents. So these are pushing air out in a 360 degree motion, gonna give you great air coverage. Plus it makes the sound of the air coming out of there very, very soft because the openings are so large. So getting great airflow from that, that's gonna help cool down your RV quicker. Here you have your little coffee bar area, and then you're gonna have four drawers that pull out. So you'll see those four drawers there. Open this up, you have your storage back behind here. Nice big tall slide out here as well. And then you have two shelves there, storage up above. The microwave, love the soft close cabinets. Definitely always notice that. If you've watched enough of my videos, you know I'm a big fan of soft close cabinets. Two shelves there. And then you have the Furion three burner stove and oven. This here, this is something I know a lot of people will talk about as well. So this Furion oven, it is definitely bigger than your standard RV oven, but it is a lot smaller than something like the Insignia four burner stove and oven that is an option on some other front living fifth wheels as well. Now, I don't know why Avalanche may be deciding to stick with this Furion system. However, I would imagine a big portion of it has to be with how much extra storage you get in this area here, because this is huge. It's literally one of your biggest storage drawers in the entire kitchen. Actually, it is your biggest storage drawer in the entire kitchen. So you would have to sacrifice this for a bigger oven and I know in my family's instance, we have never even had an oven. Well, I, yeah, no, we've had seven RVs and we've never had an oven bigger than this. I think our Cougar fifth wheel currently has an oven about this size. And it has never been a need of ours to need anything bigger than this. Like this is per, like plenty adequate for anything that we've ever cooked. Now, I know a lot of people have different opinions on that. I think ultimately just because of the hype of it, I would like to see a bigger oven in here, but I know for me personally, it wouldn't be like a must have, but y'all again can let me know your thoughts on that. And here you have a residential size microwave and then through your island in the kitchen here, off-centered sink, so big fan of that because your sink is off-centered, you have more countertop space here. You're gonna have the solid surface sink covers, nice big sink to the left, and then to the right here you have your smaller sink there. Stainless steel sinks as well. Um, let me go back into this area as well and point out your outlet real quick. So you do have your outlet there. And then your backsplash here, new black uh, backsplash design looks very neutral. Now keep in mind, this is not like a real tile backsplash. It is a faux kind of tile backsplash there. It is framed in on the sides, but it is a new look 
for the 2023 models. And while we're here too, let's look at the price real quick. You can see all the different options that are on this trailer here. And you have an MSRP price of 130, uh, 392. So that is the MSRP there from the manufacturer. Now keep in mind, this is not the sales price there. The sales price on this is probably gonna be somewhere in that like 90 to 100,000 range. I don't know exactly yet. We just got this thing in, so I have not priced it out for anybody on what I can actually sell it for. But I am in a sales position and would love to help you out in making this RV yours. So if you are interested in this RV, there is a link down below. It's the first link in the description of this video where I have my RV inquiry form so you can send me your contact information and I can get in touch with you. Or my number is on the screen and you can text me. I would love to earn your business and love to have the chance to help you out. There's a lot of cool things we do here at Holiday World as well that I definitely wanna make sure you know about. One, we have a campground in the back corner of our lot. So we're actually one of the only uh, dealerships in America where when you purchase your RV, you can actually stay in it on our lot for a day or two to get comfortable in it, make sure that everything works properly, make sure that you know what you're doing. If you have any questions, if anything needs to be fixed or adjusted, we're right here to help you out. And we also have a great service where we are a priority RV network dealer. So what that means is we have about 130 or so different dealerships across the US that offer front of the line trip interruption service if you are ever in need of service while you're in the middle of traveling. So a couple different things that we do there. And then also with our campground as well, if you're gonna be living in this full time, if you ever need to come back to get any service work done throughout any time that you own your RV, you can actually stay in our campground for free as opposed to having to get a hotel or finding family to stay with while your RV is in service getting checked and looked at. So that is a huge thing. That is a big reason why I love being here at this dealership where I'm at in Dallas, at Holiday World of Dallas, because of those little things that we do that are just so different from other places. So I wanted to get that in there as well, let y'all know about that. Um, as we keep going through the kitchen, four more drawers here in the island. You have your pullout drawer here. And then this, let me see. That's like a, a pretty solid wood there down in here as well. Cause I know like with Avalanche, always important to point out too, like this is a solid hardwood um, door that you have here as well. And then this here is all like a really good wood finish that you have throughout here. Cause some different brands are different in their finishes and stuff, but never really had any complaints or anything with uh, Avalanche having like peeling or stuff like that in the woodwork. Cause this is all solid hardwood that you're seeing through a lot of the finishes here. Open this up, you have more storage down in here. So a couple shelves there, or yeah, a couple shelves and then a pullout drawer beneath it. I'm guessing underneath here is probably your vent for your furnace equipment. You're gonna have four more pullout drawers here. Some uh, straps for your chairs in the dining area. And then down underneath here, you'll have a little storage space and this is probably your breakers and fuses. Yep, so if you ever see this in the trailer, a lot of people ask what this is. It's just your breakers and fuses back beneath there, but tucked behind a shelf so it looks more clean and finished. Then you have your countertop space here, another plug there. Let's check all the plugs in the kitchen area. Looks like no plug on this side of your island. And plug here, plug on this side of the island. You have one right there, and then plug in this area. So pretty adequate amount of plugs that you have. Have your Samsung residential refrigerator. This is gonna be about an 18 cubic foot refrigerator here. Open this up, you do have the ice maker in here as well. And the drawer there. And then this is like their, you know, kind of like their um, counter depth model um, refrigerator. Sorry, I had a blank there for a second. So it's just flat and flush, looks clean. Have your little wine rack area up above here as well. Up on the ceiling, spot for a Wi-Fi router. So if you wanted to get a Wi-Fi router installed, the wiring is all right behind that panel where that would be plugged in as well. And you can get a Wi-Fi and LTE connection on this fifth wheel. And then that is pretty much everything in that area. Get over here to the dinette table. You do have a leaf extension on it, so this will lift up. You do have storage space down underneath here, and then this all just slides out like so when you want to extend this leaf out, and then the leaf will sit on that extension there. So pretty easy system there. It does give you a decent amount of storage underneath here as well. And then when you slide that back, that just goes out of the way. So you can drop this down. Now this table is a freestanding table, so no legs underneath here that you're gonna hit your feet or legs on getting in and out. 
it is just screwed into the sidewall there. So screwed into the framing on your sidewall. So if you wanted to take this out, the reason I mentioned that is it'd be very easy to remove if you wanted to put something else in this space here where the dining table is. Also storage underneath your chairs. So you'll have storage all throughout all four of your chairs. And then nice big windows here on your campsite. Again, all have pull down blackout shades with the valances that go down the window. Last thing I wanna point out in this area, you lift up, well, first of all, your flooring here in the slide out is definitely one of the most preferred, in my opinion, where you have the same flooring material that is on your regular flooring in your slide out as well. So it just looks nice and flush and finished. And you don't even really notice that there's a lip there. Lift this up and you do have a wrapped flooring underneath here. So the sub flooring there is wrapped. Do this in a lot of other brands and you will just see bare exposed wood underneath there. Whether or not that's gonna make a difference in your camping experience is to be said, but I just think it's a nice thing to point out that you do have a wrap sub flooring underneath there and they don't take that shortcut of just leaving the wood bare and exposed underneath that slide out floor. So that's everything in this area. As you go up into your bedroom area, you're gonna have two steps here with a railing here going into that area, which is interesting because you have three steps in this area and you do not have a railing on there. It would have been nice for them to just put a railing there, but something that can easily be added. Going up into the bathroom area, you're going to have a porcelain toilet. This looks like it's going to have the soft clothes lid as well. Yep, so soft clothes lid on there. Go to the right here and you're going to have a fiberglass one piece shower. You have your medicine cabinet here, open this up. Two drawers there, shelving back through here. Those are nice deep shelves that you have all the way down. Storage underneath the sink, two shelves there for plenty of storage underneath there as well. And then a really big sink in here, definitely bigger than a lot of bathroom sinks that you see. And then a nice black faucet outlet here as well. And then going into the shower, again, it's a fiberglass one piece shower, so no seams anywhere in the shower. And then stepping up in here, Again, I'm about 6'2", and I easily have at least probably four inches to this lip. So I would say it's at least 6'6", six, six to here, and then you have another about three inches in here. So you could easily be like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, and fit in this shower, and if you're under 6'6", six, six, you should fit pretty comfortably. It does have nice shelving built into the fiberglass as well. So you have that there. And that's pretty much everything in the bathroom. Going into your bedroom, Let's kind of get over in this area here. You're going to have a king size bed. Now this is a more upgraded mattress. So this is like a memory foam style mattress that you have on here. Definitely not a super cheap mattress. Um, still may not be perfect for everybody, but definitely an upgrade from like your standard travel trailer or fifth wheel mattress. Again, another AC in here with the residential air filter. You're going to have the sliding pocket door going to the bathroom here. So that will slide and then Going into this space, you have your closet all along the back wall, and you do have washer dryer connections in this fifth wheel. Now, a couple things I like about this. First of all, you can get a stackable washer and dryer in this area here. So washer and dryer, not just a combo unit. And then this here is all open. So there's actually not a full dividing wall there. So that leaves that space open. And then going into here, you do get a bench in here as well, so you can sit down in the space couple shelves there as well for some additional storage and then this goes all the way back to the side another little thing I noticed too this is more of a detailed thing but they actually have new mechanisms here for your sliding doors and that is something that has been if like if you've had RVs before this is something that's been an issue where the mechanisms they used to use they would easily just pop out of the door here so it's kind of hard to explain the clip that it was adhered onto, but it would come off the clip and it would cause this door to drop down and come out of the rail system essentially. So this is a new system that they're using that hopefully will be much better. It looks like it's gonna be much better so far. I mean, it made it here all the way from Indiana down to Texas without coming off. So even that sometimes was a little rare to have happen because uh, there's a lot of times we got them from Indiana and these doors would already have popped off the, the uh, sliding mechanism there now it's an easy fix to get it back in it was just kind of annoying so that's a nice little thing there that they changed that i think will be a good change hopefully time will tell shelves on both sides of the bed you do have outlets down here as well and then 
again, balances down the windows here, balances down the window here as well. So you can actually make this a true blackout bedroom in this space. Nice looking headboard. This is like a soft touch kind of, um, you know, leather feeling material with soft cushioning behind it. And then this is a king size bed again with your storage underneath it, strut assisted. And then this is all framed out underneath. So a nice clean finish where you have that additional storage there. Also, because again, the 100 inch wide body construction, lots of floor space here, plenty of room to move around. Then you have four drawers that will pull out here and a spot for a TV here on the wall. Easily a big enough space there for what would be like, I mean, you could probably fit like a 42 inch screen TV or, or so there. It's hard to say exactly. Um, I learned a little trick actually from a friend that you can just take blue tape and kind of measure it out to make sure you're gonna see that the TV will fit. But that looks like it would fit. And I mean, at the very least, it's easily gonna fit a 32 inch, but it should fit something even bigger than that in that space here on the wall. And that is pretty much everything in the bedroom. I do wanna point out too, you do have a dimmer switch here on the lights. So you can dim your lights in here to give it a more moody effect if that's something that you want as well. And then you do have your outlets down underneath here on both sides. So you do have a spot for outlets on both sides as well. And that is pretty much everything on the inside. As we come back out here, you'll see your look through the fifth wheel as well again. And then we're gonna go outside and look at the outside features. So when we come outside, first of all, we gotta go look at the front cap because I do think it has a really, really nice looking front cap up here. The windshield up there, the design of it, the bright white LED docking light there looks really clean. I really like the look of the Avalanche with the windshield versus like one without it. It's white with gray and blue graphics on it. So that looks really nice as well. You have a really big hitch vision plate here. So this is a Keystone patent where this plate allows you to see how your hitch is backing up to your pin box here. So nice big one that is actually functional and easy to see through. And then you come down underneath here, you have the Road Armor pin box. So this is going to pivot back and forth. As you're going up and down the road, braking and accelerating, this is going to pivot and you have a big thick rubber bushing here that is going to absorb a lot of that contact. And then coming down underneath here, this is something where it's important. Um, I mean, I wanna stress that I am no certified RV expert. I do not know everything there has ever been to be known about RVs. I do know quite a bit and I've been making videos for over three years and have over 300 videos on YouTube but there's still things I may not know, but you wanna make sure that you're getting good sound information. So it's good to watch multiple different people. I have seen quite a few people on YouTube, um, maybe like people that haven't been doing it quite as long. Um, definitely not like the, the best people out there that I watch, like Matt and Josh, they're pretty freaking sound and they are good friends of mine. But there's some other videos I've seen where people have said like this here is prepped for a generator. So you can put a generator in here. That is not always true and not always the case. The only time that this is actually prepped out for a generator, you're gonna see like some, cord some sort of metal casing and metal box in here if it's actually already prepped out for a generator and there will be wiring for the generator. So now while this space can be converted to be prepped for a generator, it is not generator prepped as we see it right here. So generator prep they have to wire different components from the RV to the generator here, and then it would come with a propane generator. So it would also have to have the connections to the propane coming to this generator as well. That was not done. It has to be ordered to have it that way. It has to be ordered with generator prep. So this here is just giving you a nice big storage area. Now you can also always just plug in a generator into the 50 amp plug on the back of the RV. That's what my family does on our Cougar fifth wheel. And it does everything that we need it to do when we do need a generator. To the left of that, you're going to have your hydraulic fluid here. So for your hydraulic auto leveling system and your hydraulic slide outs, you have your inverter here that is going to be powering your refrigerator inside the RV. So that there is working with your battery system to power the refrigerator off of that. This has a 200 watt solar system. So you're gonna have the 15 amp solar charge controller there. You have the solar disconnect switch as well. And then you have another disconnect switch for the inverter. So that's this switch right here. Docking light switch down there. And then you do have your power switch for the inverter down there as well. So you have to make sure your inverter's on so that your refrigerator is running off that inverter. And then you have your battery disconnect right down here. So that's gonna kill all the power to your battery right there. So all those components are kind of bundled in here in that space there. 
And then as we come around this way, you're going to have your two 100 amp hour lithium batteries. So that's gonna come with these two Dragonfly 100 amp hour lithium batteries. And that's now standard for 2023. Uh, also wanna point out, you do have a one year base warranty and then a three year structural warranty on any Keystone RV. Most front living fifth wheels are going to have limited storage up front here. So that is what you see in this space. It does not go all the way through. It's pretty standard for a lot of front living fifth wheels. And I'll show why when we get to the other side. Um, let me just go point that out actually real quick. I um, do want to point out you have a Schwintech slide mechanism on your smaller slide out box here and then a nice finish here on the underneath part of the slide out box. This is not just like wrap. This is actually like a really solid, um, almost like plastic feeling material underneath the slide box. So a very premium finish underneath here. So this does not go all the way through because when you come to the other side, just with how compressed they have to make everything up into this space, you have your two propane bottles here, and then you can see how close it is to your water connections here. So there's just no way that they can fit all of this and a pass-through storage compartment as well. But don't worry because there is a ton of storage on the back as you'll see in just a second. Coming back into this space, you do have your shower head here. It's more like a hose, um, but it can be used as a um, shower head as well with hot and cold water. All your water connections in there. And then I do like the way that this opens up. You actually can see you don't have to duck underneath anything. You don't even have to duck under the slide out to get into this space. Hydraulic slide on your bigger slide outs here. So this is your big slide in the kitchen. Come down underneath here. You're going to have your black and gray tank dump valves all coming into this one central area, it looks like. You see your rack and pinion style slide mechanism. And that is going to be a hydraulic slide. Ooh. I want to come back here real quick because you do have a sewer hose storage tube right there as well. And then you have prep to add side cameras. If you wanted to add side cameras, you can add those there. And then coming down underneath here, you have a fully enclosed underbelly. All your water tanks and water lines are going to be in that enclosed underbelly area. So you're going to have above the insulation is where your water lines and water tanks sit. And it's sitting in the same cavity that all of your furnace ducting is in. So when your furnace is running, that is also going to be helping keep that cavity warm so that your water tanks and water lines do not freeze. Now coming down underneath here, this is the road armor suspension. So you're going to see a graphic on the screen showing the road armor suspension versus some other competing or competing, sorry, suspension brands out there. This here, definitely a superior suspension. It's giving you six inches of travel up and six inches of travel down with the four rubber bushings, one on each corner to absorb that shock. So you're getting a nice, good suspension system there that is going to help keep everything from shaking and rattling as you're going up and down the road. It's still obviously going to happen, but it's going to help mitigate that quite a bit. And then coming back this way, looks like, yeah, just wanted to make sure and check, but yeah, your one single spot right there is where all your water tanks go to. So just one spot where you're dumping all your tanks. And then in the back, you have all your storage back here. So this is a, looks to be, a 10 foot slide out tray. So an absolutely huge storage space that you have down underneath here. And this is really, really nice to see because from Keystone, when you look at like their Alpine model and their Montana model, none of their front living models have this slide out tray on the back. And then there's some other brands out there that do have the slide out tray, but it's only like a six foot tray or an eight foot tray. This is a 10 foot slide out tray back here that you have. So this is absolutely huge. And then when you come to the side over here, you'll see all your storage along the side as well. That goes down through there. Also can point out while we're under here as well, you have all your aluminum framing throughout here. And then when you go up into this area, you can see all your frame connections. They are welded on both sides of the frame as well. There are some brands out there that only weld on one side of the frame. So that is something to keep in mind too, that you are getting a um, framing construction that is welded on both sides of the frame. You have your ladder to get up onto the roof, backup camera prep, and then we will just get up there real quick and go take a look at what's going on up on the roof. All right, so come up here and you have your three Coleman Mach ACs. You have some vents here for the attic. You have your wine guard digital antenna, and then you have your 200 watt solar system on here. 
Now, Keystone does have multiple different solar options. This one has the 200 watt solar system on it. They also have a 400 watt option and a 600 watt option. So this one here is gonna keep your batteries charged, make sure that your batteries don't die on you. And then that's pretty much the extent of what a 200 watt solar system is gonna do on an RV. So that's everything up here on the roof. You also have fully walkable slide out boxes. So you can walk on the slide out box as well. And then let's hop back down. So as we come down this side, I wanna point out that you have two awnings on this model, LED light strips up underneath the awning. And these are actually kind of more angled out towards your campground. So instead of just shooting straight down the wall, they're actually angled out just a little bit. So whether your awnings are in or out, this is going to illuminate the space outside of your fifth wheel on the ground. It doesn't look that bright during the day time, but at night they are super bright and light up the whole space. And then you can see as you go forward, there's gonna be another one going all the way to the other side of the entry door. Two speakers up there as well. And then nice frameless windows on your windows on the avalanche as well, giving it a nice clean look. And I believe that is just about everything on the outside. Oh, last thing too, I do wanna point out, this does have a polar pack on it because I know this is something that a lot of people ask about. So basically the polar pack there, everything on this RV is making it capable of being camped in or lived in in pretty much any climate. Between having the three ACs on the roof and your furnace system, the electric fireplace, and then all the insulation underneath, this here is easily gonna be comfortable to live in in any climate just about. I know there's lots of people living in like the Avalanche 390DS next to us. So definitely something that you can get in comfortably and live in as long as it has the proper, you know, floor plan and layout that you're looking for to be comfortable in. As far as comfortability goes with temperature, this one will have everything you need just about to make sure that you're comfortable in there. The only thing it won't have is the 12 volt heat pads. So the 12 volt heat pads on the water tanks, that is something where if you're towing the RV with water in the tanks in freezing or below freezing temperatures, that's typically when those get engaged. Now that's something that like an Alpine in a Montana has when you go up into a higher price point range, but you won't have that from the Avalanche. So that is something just to keep in mind that that's important to you as well. All right, y'all, that's all I got for you. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button down below and definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you are interested in this RV, I would love to personally help you out in assisting you in making this RV yours. So you can go down to the first link down below in the description of this video, or obviously my number is up on the screen as well, and you can shoot me a text. And I would love to personally help you out in making this RV yours, or maybe any of these RVs out here. So that's all I got for y'all. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on this model down below as well in the comment section. And until next time, I'll see you out camping.